Welcome to module 9, lecture number 30. This is continuation of our module on conceptualization and prototyping 1. Now, until now we have discussed about various uh, ideation techniques. We have talked about creativity, we have studied several techniques in short, but we start now our intention is to talk about few specific techniques in detail. So, in this lecture which is also going to be a short one, we are going to study about a technique that is uh, part of the ideation techniques and which is uh, most famously called as CAMPA. Uh, we have talked about this in, in our earlier lecture in short. Now, this CAMPA method helps you generate ideas for new products and services by encouraging you to ask seven different types of questions, which will help you understand how you innovate and improve existing products, services, problems and ideas. Scamper is a surprisingly easy to start using and very efficient in innovation and ideation sessions. So, remember this situation, see whenever we are uh, in the process of ideation. So, that means, we are very clear about our persona, we know uh, the characteristic of the person for whom we are designing. Also, we have a clear uh, specific characteristic of the brief, the design brief. Now, with these two things in hand, now we are in a situation to trigger our creative thoughts. Now, uh, see the question arises that how do you come with unique novel and interesting thoughts. Well, that is uh, uh, until many uh, decades earlier, uh, people used to uh, think that uh, this is a God given um, special skill or an uh, characteristic of a person who is highly creative. Uh, not necessarily. Now, there are many literatures, there are many um, training uh, workshops that has happened that has uh, suggested that by incorporation of some specific techniques of some specific ways through which we visualize, we can actually trigger thoughts in a person, in a person who wants to come up with some ideas. In, in this perspective, Scamper plays a very important role and it plays this role by allowing you to ask few questions and what Scamper does is that it provides you with a perspective of the kind of questions that you need to ask during the ideation process and this helps you guide your thoughts to channelize your thoughts in a way that new and novel ideas start emerging out of your um, the creating thinking session. Let us uh, know about its historical background. So, Alex Osborne, the originator of the brainstorming method. So, if you remember the brainstorming method, where we discussed that it is a team activity, where a person come up with ideas and then it is taken over by the, the various teammates and subsequent ideas are generated. So, he was the first person who came up with this concept of scamper and originally he uh, came up with some questions which is used in this camper technique. However, later it was Bob Eberle, an education administrator and author who organized these questions. The questions, the seven questions that, are, that we are going to discuss, he organized those seven questions into the scamper and benomic, okay, into the scamper framework. Now, scamper refers to a series of thought sparkers or provocations, which help you to innovate on an existing product, service or situation by looking through different lenses. See, we talked about perspective change, we talked about the earlier techniques, where we had um, talked about how uh, perspective change from different work profiles can help us in looking at the same problem from different roles playing situations, right. Similarly, Scamper also allows you to provoke this question, so that it helps you to look 
the situation from different perspective. Now, there are seven provocation lenses in this camper method. So, what are they? These seven provocation questions uh, can be classified into these seven categories. This is uh, substitute, combine, adapt, modify, put to another use, eliminate, and rearrange. These are the seven categories based on which these questions have been categorized. Right? So, by the name itself, if you uh, see its name, uh, substitute, you know, combine, adapt, modify, that means either magnifying or minify, you know, put to another use, eliminate, rearrange, you would be able to understand what essentially these words or these categories are trying to provoke or are trying to tell you how they are trying to force your thought to, um, to go into a particular direction of ideation by using these as a technique. Right? Now, let us go in, in detail of each of these uh, categories. Now, before you start uh, listing down the questions, it is important that you realize how do you use camper. So, first, no, I am taking an example of an existing product. So, first take an existing product or a service. So, the question is that say prob probably you are designing a uh, product that is already existing, you are working on the redesign, new design of that product, it is a redesigned project. Now, it could be an existing product service or an idea which you want to improve or which could be a great starting point for future development, that is the situation that is at our hand. Now, simply go down the list and ask questions regarding each of these seven elements. Right? You are supposed to ask questions to yourself, to your own self. I mean, while you are in the process of thinking, you ask these questions to the self. And these seven elements are based on what we have discussed here. Substitute, combine, adapt, modify, put to another use, eliminate and rearrange. Right? So, you ask questions regarding each of these seven elements and then you follow a step by step guide that I have just listed down. Apply the questions to values, benefits, services, touch points, product attributes. So, these are the characteristics where you can apply each of these questions, pricing markets and es essentially on any other related aspect that you might be able to think of that has relevance to your ideation needs. Look at the answers that you came up with. Do any of the answers stand out as viable solutions? Could you use any of them to create a new product or develop an existing one? Take the best ideas. So, you will get many ideas that would come based on the elements that we have discussed and the questions that you are going to ask. Take the good ideas and then explore them further. Look out at the detailing aspect of it. So, now we will start up, um, we will start with each of these elements and see the questions that would guide you to ask these thought provoking uh, situations or come up with ideas that are uh, thought provoking in nature. The first one is substitute. Now, overall the question to think about here is what can I substitute or change in my product? See, this is a very, very important question. What can I substitute or change in my product? It can be a problem with a feature, it can be a problem with call to action feature, it can be a problem with the graphical user interface, it can be a problem with the way the product is hosted somewhere, it can be a problem with the interaction type, the way the your user is communicating, the interaction messages, the interaction um, techniques or it can be a problem with the entire process itself of how each stakeholder is being connected with the system and how data is being communicated across each channels. Now, you should think about substituting part or parts of your product or process for something else. That means, you have to come up 
as, as something else, you should think about a situation or a new, new idea in order to substitute that what is already existing. And the guiding questions for this one can be, what can I substitute so as to make an improvement? So, the idea is to consider something as an improvement, right. How can I substitute the place, time, materials or people? Now, these are some of the examples that I have quoted, but you can add something else to it. How can I, how can I substitute the call to action feature? How can I substitute the primary activity with something else? How can I substitute the secondary activities? How can I substitute the color palettes, the grid system? You can use up any of those uh, characteristics and ask this question. Third one, can I substitute one part for another or change any parts? So, if I, if I change a part from here and substitute with another, what will happen? How will the product perform? How will the product be perceived by our by user? These are essential questions for you to ask. Can I replace someone involved? Right? Can I change the rules, the way the product functions, the product actually interacts? Then should I change the name of the product? Can I use other ingredients or materials? Can I use other processes or procedures? Can I change the shape, color, roughness, sound, smell or the, any of the visual characteristics? Now, I am uh, using these questions from the perspective of industrial product design also, because camper was originally used for industrial product design. So, you would see the questions asking attributes and characteristics of industrial product, but it can be suited for your software product or the graphical user interface product also, if you replace the characteristics of the product with the one of uh, industrial products. Now, can I use this idea for other projects? Can I change my feelings or attitude towards it? This is a very, very vital question, you know. Can I change my feeling or attitude towards it? Now, the moment you ask this question, the important aspect is how do you change? And an element, say for example, a feeling or attitude can only be changed you if you have some design cue, if you have any feature or there is some trigger element is there that induces that mood or that feeling inside you. It can be a product, it can be a feature, it can be a service, it can be uh, the way it looks like. How do you induce that? So, that is a very essential part of it, right. Use these instead of starting with I can. Now, while you have these questions listed, your, uh, your task becomes easier if you start answering these questions with the statement that, okay, I can do this, I can do that, I can replace this feature with that feature, I can replace this way of looking at the interface from that perspective, I can replace the way the functions have been grouped together, affinities have been grouped together, I can uh, replace the logical structure of the information architecture and put it into a different way these things can be asked and answered while you are trying to substitute things. The next one is combine. Now, the overall question to think about here is, how can I combine two or more parts of my product, problem or process, so as to achieve a different product, problem or process to enhance synergy. Now, here you are combining things you are trying to combine two different entities all together and come up with a new product, concept of a product. So, creative thinking you know involves combining previously unrelated ideas. For example, if I ask someone that okay, you have shoes, now can I incorporate the traditional uh, sweeping materials uh, in the shoes and make a shoe that will sweep your house as you walk. Oh, these are unrelated ideas, absolutely you will not see no products in the market. Now, whether this would be useful or not, remember this is not at this stage that you are going to think about. At the stage of ideation, your simple, simple goal is to come up with as many ideas as possible. So, therefore, any unrelated elements can be related to come up with new ideas and the guiding questions are what ideas, materials, features, processes, people, products or components can I combine? Can I combine or merge this or that with other objects? 
what can I combine so as to maximize the number of uses see. So, you are not only addressing to the primary use, but also you are focusing on other secondary and tertiary uses, secondary and tertiary uses is it not right. What can I combine in order to lower the costs of production? What which materials can, could I combine? Where can I build synergy? Which are the best elements I can bring together so as to achieve a particular result? See, these are some of the ways through which you can think how you can combine two unrelated things and think about something which is absolutely unique or different. The third one is adapt. Now, overall the question that you need to think about is what can I adapt in my product problem or process? Think about which parts of the product or process you could adapt so as to solve your problem. Now, the guiding question should be which part of the product could I change? Could I change the characteristics of a component? Can I seek inspiration in other products? Inspiration you are getting trying to get inspired from other products and processes. Which, can, which are being used in different contexts, but you want to borrow that and use it in a completely new and uh, different context. Does the history offer any solutions? If you look at the historical aspect, does that offer any solutions? Which ideas could I adapt, copy or borrow from other people's products? So, in, in design we do not focus on copy or something, we only focus on inspiration, but remember there is one aspect of ins inspiration that whatever you get inspired from has to undergo through a process of change, through a process of change. It has to undergo the, 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 the idea has to undergo a process of change. You cannot directly use something and, and say that it is my, my own concept. No, you can get inspired. It has to go through a process of change and those change aspect can be incorporated and then you can call it inspiration. Instead of looking at being copying or borrowing, we rather say that we are focusing on inspiration. Right? What processes should I adapt? Can I adapt the context or target group? what can I adapt in this or that way in order to make this result. So, this is uh, the third element that is adapt which we have discussed about. The fourth one is modify which is also known as either you magnify or you minify. Now, overall the question that you need to focus on this is what can I modify or put more or less emphasis on in my product problem or process? Can I change the item in some way? Can I change meaning, color, motion, sound, smell, form or shape? Or shape? It is time to magnify or exaggerate your idea, product, problem or process or to minify it. Now, these questions will give you new insights about which components are the most important ones. Think about changing part or all of the current situation of the or the product. Alternatively, distort the product in an unusual way. And some of the questions that would help you to ask that, what can I magnify or make larger? What can I tone down or delete? Could I exaggerate or overstate buttons, colors or size something something blah 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 etcetera characteristics? Could I grow the target group? What can be made higher, bigger or stronger? Can I increase its speed or frequency? Can I add extra features? How can I add extra value? What can you remove or make smaller, condensed, lower, shorter or lighter or streamline, split up or understate? What can I change in this way or that way? so as to achieve such and such a result, these are the questions that would allow you to either think from the perspective of either magnifying or minifying per anything, any aspect of the concept that you are trying to conceptualize. The fifth one is put to another use. 
Now, the overall question to consider here is how can I put the thing to other users? So, here we are talking about context of use. This is the most important aspect that we are focusing. How can I put the thing to other users? What are new ways to use the product or service? Can I reach out to other users if I modify the product? Is there another market for the product? It is time to work out how you may be able to put your current product or idea to other uses and purposes. Now, guiding questions for it can be what else can it be used for? How would a child use it? An older person, a, a person with uh, uh, specific difficulties, specially abled persons, how would people with different disabilities, yes, use it? Which other target group could benefit from this product? Right? Some other questions for put to another use are, what other kind of user would need or want my product? Who or what else may be able to use it? Can it be used by people other than those it was originally intended for? Are there new ways to use it in its current shape or form? Would there be other possible uses if I were to modify the product? See now here the focus in focus is on other possible uses. For example, if you go to Punjab, you many a time you see lassi is being prepared in washing machines. That is a classic example of how a product can be made used in other situations, in other context. How can I reuse something in a certain way by doing what to do by it? These are some of the things about put to use. The next one is eliminate, the sixth one. Here the, the overall question to ask is what can I eliminate or simplify in my product design or service? Think of what might happen if you were to eliminate, simplify or reduce or minimize parts of your idea. If you continue to trim your idea or service or process, you can gradually narrow your challenge down to that part or function that is the most important. That means, in that case what happens? You end up focusing your unique selling proposition feature of the product because you will start substituting things which are not very important or which are not primary in nature. Thereby, you come down to a situation where you only have the feature that is the mainstay for your product, for your software. So, the guiding questions here would be, what can I remove without altering its function? Can I reduce its uh, reduce time or components? What would happen if I removed a component or part of it? For eliminate some of the other questions are, can I reduce effort, can I cut costs, how can I simplify it, what is non-essential or unnecessary, can I eliminate the rules, can I make it smaller, can I split my product into different parts, can I eliminate what by doing what. These are some of the questions that would be, that would help you to focus on eliminate. The final one that we are going to discuss is rearrange. Now, overall the question that should guide you is how can I change, reorder or reverse the product or problem? What would I do if I had to do this process in reverse? Some of the guiding questions can be what can I rearrange in some way? Can I interchange components, the pattern or layout? Here we are focusing on layout. Can I change the pace or schedule? What would I do if part of your problem, product or process worked in reverse? Can I rearrange what in what way such that something of this kind, whatever I think about happens? These are some of the questions that would help you to ask about more specific questions about the ideas that you come up with. And this way you would be able to come up with more ideas that may help to solve your problem in much more unique way. In subsequent lectures, we will discuss more about other techniques in ideation.